Hockey and welcome to the Hockey and Hangout Hour. It's Monday, March 15th. March 15th, so close to that springtime. And who does enjoy spring more than our guest today, Peter Bezin? How you doing, Pete? Good. How are you, Mike? I'm doing fantastic. Thanks for coming on today and spending a little time and hanging out with us. Uh, lots to talk about since we had you on last time. I mean, last time we had you on, I think you were talking. I don't know about driving through and, and uh, bringing a product to cars and, and uh, right. you know, a couple people there, you know, and now look at it. Here we are one year later. Yeah, that's right. So I guess that was the last time. Yeah, we were doing that about a year ago when the pandemic started. Uh, we didn't know what was going to happen. And I think we did a curbside pickup business for a while in the beginning. And then you're right. We went through the drive through model after that. That's incredible. Yeah. So after that, you, you drove through and then, um, then what happened? So, uh, how, how did you slowly progress? What, what, what went from what? Well, what happened was it was, um, you know, a year ago would have been March and, uh, we, we were sensing that it could be busy because the phones were ringing off the hook with people, you know, owning up to the fact that we're going to have to stay home for a while. And, um, you know, if you remember, everybody was really scared. No one knew if you could get this thing just from walking around somebody else breathing or touching something somebody else touched. So um, what happened with us is our industry wasn't given clear guidance. So the lawn and garden industry had... Um, uh, always fallen in the definition of agriculture and agriculture was exempt and, and was an essential service uh, sure. because of the food aspect. And it took about a month to get that language cleared up. I worked personally on that with the state legislatures so that horticulture was included in the definition of agriculture and we were essential. But in that month period, we, um, we kind of, you know, we were very conservative. We didn't open our stores. In fact, in Hopkinton, we didn't open our store until almost July people to come inside but right. we even, felt even though some retails did open up you right to stick with your model because of, of safety reasons yeah yeah and the employees didn't know and they were scared so we wanted to do it for them as well um and then the outside part was even a little sketchy so we kept people in their cars all the way up until mother's day week which is our busiest week of the yeah. year oh sure we had people driving and we set up our garden center where we had a a long tent and all the products that you know should have been of interest some things that were in flower for plants people would point and we'd just put them on a cart they'd go to the register the outdoor register and they'd read their credit card number they'd hit their trunk boop and we'd throw it in and they never got out of their car so we did that we could handle about 300 plus drive-through trips a day but you know we get up to six and seven hundred trips a day in may and we had to open up and let the customers out of their cars and into our outdoor environment in May. And we finally did that. I, I have to admit, because, in, you know, driving by, I had the sense I was driving by the high school drop off and pick up. Yeah. And the way it was lined up. It, I mean, I, I'm not going to say it was a well oiled machine because I didn't get to see it. it. It looked like the cars were moving in and out through. And of course, you did have a system, and, and you learn it, and you you it's it's uh, forever adapting. Like every business had to do, we seen, um, you know, the spoon do it. They had to adapt. Cornell's, Bill's Pizza, everybody had to, you know, adapt. And there's there's no book that says, all right, pandemic, uh, do this. We never had any of that. Right, right. And um, you know what ended up happening was. Um, the garden centers had to stay in business that time of year because there's a whole supply chain that's so time dependent. So if you're growing pansies, they're ready this week. And if you don't take them, the grower has to throw them all out. You're done. Right. So there's things like that that only sell for a short period of time when they're in flower in that case. And so we, we even though we weren't declared essential, we had to stay open. And um, in the end, it was fair because... Um, the box stores were all open and they have garden centers and they were letting people into their stores. Sure. So we just felt that the legislatures shouldn't shut us down because we're, we're kind of more of a mom and pop industry and we're trying to be closer to our customers than the box stores. 
and do the right thing perhaps more than they were. Uh, but in the end, they approved us as essential because we do sell seeds and starts, little vegetables sure. and herbs and fruit trees and blueberry bushes. And the food aspect is, is what really did it. But also they knew it's outdoor enjoyment, it's exercise, it's things to keep you at home when, at a time where they didn't want anybody going out of their home. There was lockdowns going on. Right, exactly. They yeah. missed that season. Uh, the, the, our customers would have been furious. And I can't oh, tell you how many came through and just said, thank God you guys are open, giving us enjoyment and things to do. Yeah, because uh, it, it, you must have increased, it, it increased your education to all these new customers that you're getting because people are looking for new things to do around the house, you know? There's people that may have never started a vegetable garden, herb garden, or decided to have a flower garden, whatever. Hey, I want a new hobby. I want to try something different. And now you get all these new people in because, hey, they got the time to do it now. There were uh, 16 or 19, depending on the report you read, million new gardeners last year in this country. <laughs> <laughs> so, and these people, you know, they wanted something to do and they wanted to grow their own food because they didn't want to trust where the food was coming from all of a sudden. There was all sorts of fear. Um, so there's a lot of reasons people got in it. And I think, you know, we're going to go through this again this year. I think it'll free up and people will start to travel again. And then maybe nobody wants to be in their gardens at that point. It's time to get out. But for the for the time being, we're seeing a real early surge here again this year of the phone starting to ring earlier and people asking for things. I, and, I, don't, and, think, I don't think they're rigging that hat yesterday during uh, the whiteout conditions that we had. I know, I know. <laughs> But we're hearing from our yeah. partners down south. It's it's crazy. The demand is is crazy yeah. for lawn and garden right now. So we're, that, we're expecting a busy spring. That's good news. So now uh, you, you're now in your full start of things again, doing your uh, uh, the the wholesale yard. Right, you got that running, and that's up to speed. All the contractors seem to be back to work doing stuff. Yeah. So that was that was really sketchy a year ago. Um, corporations didn't have people coming into their office parks. So the landscapers didn't have the normal, you know, plant 10,000 annuals at the, at the entrance. And, and, you know, they, you know, didn't pay as much attention to the, the regular routine stuff they'd always do, whether it was lawn mowing or whatever, because the tenants weren't in the building. So the landscaping business was off to a real slow start last year. And a lot of landscapers said, we're not even going to start up. And they didn't until mid-May, maybe. Um, but that's not the case this year. People are used to this now. Um, homeowners are okay with having landscapers outside of their houses where they weren't a year ago. So, yeah, the landscape quote work that we're doing right now for landscape jobs seems to be pretty heavy right now. Now, is uh, and I know you're not directly involved with new construction, but you do a lot of uh, work on new construction as well as supply new construction. Has the new construction picked up? Because I, I hear that was suffered as well. It is in certain parts of the state. I think in this town, Hopkinton, there's not huge tracks being developed except for the legacy project, of course. Um, we have a new location that we just opened up. I can talk about that. Oh, in a minute if really? Like. What's, what's going on there? Well, that's a wholesale location. So our business is half wholesale, half retail. Right. And we just picked up a 35-year-old business formerly known as Capeway Wholesale Nursery in Middleborough. Wow. So down there, there's a lot of building. You're talking about building. There seems to be a lot of building going on in Plymouth and the surrounding towns. And uh, we're seeing that. Um, it, it's already starting down there. Yeah, the Cape, the Cape is something right now. Like, like you said, Plymouth, because Plymouth is so huge that it's, for lack of a better term, it's been underdeveloped in the past 30 years. You know, there wasn't much going on, but now I, I want to say the last five to 10 years, uh, things have gone crazy down there. And you can tell when you're in town as much as we are, you don't see those gravel trucks going through town anymore. The Kimballs, the Pines, the the Vacatize, you know, and even they are spread out because you, you've got to be competitive. You've got to put your, your plants and your supplies where they need it. You know, you're not going to be, you know, competitive sending uh, lube 
from Hopkins down to Plymouth. Right. Yeah. So that's why we acquired this business. The, the owners were ready to retire. We knew them well. They wanted to sell to us and it was a good deal and it was structured very amicably. So we were able to get in there two weeks ago. We just opened up Excellent. and, um, you know, count the inventory and make sure we're off to a good start. And the ordering had already been done. You got to buy the plants starting last July and August, actually. So all those plants are coming in by the trailer load down there now. And I think that was a good acquisition for our company because like, like we're talking about, it's, there's building going on in that part of the, the state quite a bit. And there's not a lot of other wholesalers like us down there that sell to the landscape businesses. Right. All right. So now as far as um, the busy time, and like you said, the construction, because you remember we only got two seasons here in Massachusetts, winter and construction. And, uh, <laughs> and now that construction season's well underway. I mean, we have, uh, you know, our downtown corridor project is uh, just kicked off this week uh, with some tree clearing and, and um, barricades going up. I guess they're going to start up by the common and take away that right away and so forth. It's, it's not there. But uh, it's also time. Granted, yesterday's uh, freak little snowstorm. I like it how it was like nice out, overcast. Then the temperature dropped and we got all that snow and then Poof, the sun comes out, you know, it's, yeah. it's, it's amazing. But what, uh, what is, what are the people planting right now? What is it that has to go on the ground now? Well, you know, it's, it's usually what looks good is what they buy in our industry. Our retail side, especially is based a lot on impulse. So people are thinking of the forsythia that are going to be in bloom in a couple of weeks. If, if it stays warm, uh, of course, the PJM rhododendron that we introduced is a hot seller. Yeah perennials like hellebores or the Lenten rose um, are in bloom right now. Things like witch hazel. So that's what I've brought in so far. Red twig dogwood looks nice in the winter with the red twigs, yellow twig dogwood, same thing, andromeda. So a lot of shrubs are in already and that's early. I normally wouldn't bring these in until last week of March. So I brought them in in the second week of March this year, knowing you know, kind of the 30 day forecast that we're going to go through this cold snap, but we have to cover them all up, unfortunately, um, just so they look presentable. It doesn't kill them. It's just, you want them to look as good as they can for the consumer when they come in. But yeah, it's a lot of early, we got our uh, sprouted bulbs in, which are hyacinths and tulips and daffodils. And people buy those like crazy. Uh, and then the regular bulbs are selling now too. So it's, it's starting. We're seeing more traffic earlier this year than we normally do. Oh, that, that's great. And as you know, people are returning work and Massachusetts is opening up a little bit more. Uh, we got our next phase of opening uh, next Monday on the 22nd, uh, right after, uh, you know, second day of spring, if you will. Uh, what, what do you think is going to be the hot projects for these homeowners this year? What do, what do you see that's going to be trending? I mean, is it going to be fire pits? Is it going to be barbecues? Is it going to be patios? Uh, what, what do you think? What's, what's it's up? all the above. I'd say a big one is screening. People want to screen out their neighbors now more because they see them when they're looking out of their home offices more than they <laughs> normally do. So I've purchased a lot of junipers and arborvitae for this year and, and evergreens. Um, that's a trend. Definitely the hardscape. You mentioned that. Um, patios and walkways. People want outdoor enjoyment. And that's a fire pit with a sitting bench around there or um, you know, an outdoor pizza oven. Um, and we are in the stone business and we're selling manufactured stone mostly to the trade uh, because that's a do it for me type thing more than a do it myself type thing. Um, and, you know, I definitely see that as a trend. I think the home gardening in general, I think, people, you know, hopefully out of these 16 or 19 million new gardeners, at least half of them do it again and stick with it. And that's grow your own vegetables and herbs. Um, I bought a lot more fruit trees in this year and a lot, and we're planning on a lot more annuals and vegetables. The problem is supply right now because the whole country experienced a surge and there wasn't enough supply. Trees, shrubs, perennials, even annuals are in short supply now because especially trees, shrubs, because it takes a long growing cycle. When you're buying a shrub like we sell in a three gallon pot and two feet tall, that thing is already, that plant's already five to six years old. So you can't just, can't just make more of these things. So 
unfortunately, we're seeing some price pressure here from the growers because there's not as much supply right now. Uh, that's something too, yeah. It, it, of course, weather is always a factor, especially where, you know, you, you change your whole business model over the years from doing everything yourselves to shipping in. And I mean, because you, you're still, you know, um, you're still producing out of there. But we, not- we, we're at, we actually got into growing again last year. You did. I saw a yeah. couple of greenhouses go up. Yeah, in the back. We have a... Yeah. Uh, plant we're growing 30,000 perennials this year last year we grew 20,000 and it was good because perennials were in short supply and we had them when most people didn't so we're glad we got into the growing for that reason it's also a cost advantage when you do your own growing sure, sure. and you know it's better for the environment really you don't have to bring as much in put bring it in by truck All right have you seen now we got the legacy south all done and all those apartments. Do you see them doing any kind of like window gardens or potted gardens in the, I know they don't have much space, but what public space there are, they make it, cause they're showing how, you know, you watch YouTube and you see all these little gardens that you do it in buckets for when you, when you don't have much land. Yeah. Uh, so, so, so are you seeing any, any trend in the, the legacy uh, folks uh, gardening? Yeah, quite a few of them are in here. They're buying, um, uh, containers or planters, like you say, and they're growing in small spaces. The homeowners association um, can sometimes be a difficult environment to do whatever you want on your outside. So we're not seeing a lot of that. Uh, however, there's a few houses where you've seen uh, little orchards pop up, people growing their own fruit, uh, a few vegetable gardens. I know the trails, which is that condo association, 55 and older out toward Wilson Street. They are very liberal on their association rules, and they're going to allow a lot of backyard gardening. And um, actually, I think they're doing a community garden. Once once enough of the homes get completed up there, they're doing a community garden. So we're working with uh, Vin Vin um, and his daughter up there. We're working with them. Oh, well, that's awesome! Community gardens. Uh, we we get any in town? The what? Any community gardens in town? Uh, you know. Like the public, I know Ashland used to have one there by Stone Park. Yeah, do yeah. Ever, anyone ever do any community gardens? Well, there's, yeah, in this town, no. Um, Westboro has one, and Ashland has one, like you mentioned, where people can have a little plot and do their own growing. What you got in this town is Laura Davis. Um, yeah. Little I Life Farm, I think it's called. Yeah. She does that on Pond Street and on School Street. Um, and she's, she's the one who runs the farmer's market. Yep. Uh, but that's a, that's a CSA. And there's a company used to be out of Ashland. They moved now. I can't remember the name of that, that company, but they come here once a week for their pickups. So they'll harvest whatever's in season. Um, and this time of year, it's a lot of root crops and things like that. And they sell shares and, you know, hundred people a week will come into our parking lot as a pickup area to pick up their, their produce. So it's nice and fresh. Right. Um, now that we're starting to get outside and, you know, first day of spring is just next week. Uh, we're going to smell some good cooking in your pocket lot soon. Oh yeah. yeah well, tell you know, Melissa, my yeah. marketing and events oh, yeah. planner. Um, she's got, um, uh, tandoor and curry coming in here yep. and she's got, um, um, the whoopie pie truck comes in. We've got a taco truck. We've got the lobster roll, the cousin's oh, lobster. Right. Yeah, yeah. Um, pretty much every weekend. I have to limit it. In, in May, we just don't have enough room in our parking lot. So we're only going to do one truck. But she's got two trucks in on a lot of days, too. Oh, that's awesome. And she's doing that with all our stores. And it's really been a good community feel-good thing with all our stores. And people are getting used to it. And they call in their orders ahead of time now. And we like it because some people will come over to the store afterwards munching away on a lobster roll and, and shop with us. So it's good. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. yeah every, everyone wins, you know, every, I mean, you know, you walk around, first off, you walk around your store, not just inside, but outside, yeah. you, you can't work up an appetite. I mean, look at, look at all the walking we used to do doing our show together, you know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, we clocked last spring about nine miles, 10 miles a day. You walk as a, as an employee selling trees and shrubs that's how much you walk a day so it's a great job if anyone that you know wants to apply mike we are looking for a few key positions and you stay in shape there you go 
All right. So now let's see. We covered all the homeowners. We covered uh, uh, any any projects in town that's going on. Anything, um, you know. Any, oh, any, yeah. Any, I noticed that behind you. Yeah. Any. Uh, can you talk a little bit about the uh, Gateway Green? So thank you for asking, actually. And, and, and let's, 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 let's start off right at the beginning. Let's give the history. You know, 495 interchange, ugly. Right? right. That's what it was. And then what happens? So Ken Driscoll gets the credit for coming up with the idea. Uh, Ken's the CEO at Select. Yeah, he's fantastic. He's a great guy. And he was on the chamber. He was active in the chamber back then. He thought about that. And um, I like the idea. Finn Perry liked the idea. So Finn and I really jumped on it. Um, uh, there was a few more people who helped out along the way, but we got this thing funded privately over five years ago now. And you had some real heroes like Unibank who put in $25,000 and they just put in another $20,000 on the renewal. Uh, Mastriani had helped out tremendously, Paul Mastriani uh, back then. But then we had a whole bunch of sign. Uh, the, the way we raise money is in kind and then purchase um, through cash, they would get a sign for ten thousand dollars and we had seven sign holders in the end that funded the first five years not only constructing it but maintaining it, it costs about between six and ten thousand dollars a year to maintain that something like what's going on with the, the chambers right yeah no there's a nice picture so that picture is pretty accurate actually um aside from the green for the grass we put mulch in instead yep and this year um we were successful in um, renewals. Um, we got two new sign holders now and two people backed out. The two new sign holders are uh, Dell and uh, Charles Bank Realty Advisors, which is Nick Slotchy's company in town. Okay, excellent. So you'll see two new signs go up and uh, we raised about $70,000 this year. And that will fund the maintenance for the next five years, where we'll again do a re-up on the sign renewal. So we were fortunate, Mike. The DOT allowed us to do these signs, and Carol and Dykema really helped out because it wasn't a normal thing for a town to do off the interchange like that. Right. But she understood the value of it. She understood it's not costing taxpayers anything. It's a chamber initiative now, and it's been a it's been a nice thing for the town. And I'm really proud of it because, you know, I want to keep it looking looking nice like i had promised in the beginning and i and i also love that how you also incorporated the veterans memorial uh there as well that stayed intact because yeah. just most of those interchanges are uh memorials uh yeah. for vets and uh you did a great job with that so what kind of maintenance you, you got to do what what kind of maintenance goes on there that you need so much money well, we found out that the crab apples didn't like it there too much and they are a tree that can take a um, a heat island like you have here Sure. And the wind and everything. Uh, but the what got them was the winter moth and the gypsy moth outbreaks that we didn't have last year, but we had in the first four years they were out there. And they were weakened to the point where I'm taking them down and we're going to put new trees in. And this is on the South Street end of yep. the median strip. So we do have a major uh, replanting going on and we're going to do that within the next month or so. Not only those trees, but also some some shrubs that kind of need a little freshening up. And how 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 is the those materials holding up to all that salt that's down there? Well, they did well. They did well for the salt. You know, I picked the right uh, uh, um, cultivars of you know right types of plants yep. that could withstand not only the heat island and the extreme wind, but also the salt. So, like the oak trees you're you're showing in the background there look phenomenal, and um, you know they get a ton of salt drift on them throughout the winter, but they can take it. Now, why did you opt for the mulch instead of the grass? The uh, DOT would rather have seen mulch, and it made sense because if you have grass, you got to get out there and mow it constantly. And we have to hire two police detail officers every time to do that for at least four hours. And it would have been cost prohibitive to have to go out there 20, 25 times a year and mow. Whereas the mulch is good, except for, except for when people like to throw cigarette butts out their windows. Sometimes I was going to say it was so dry that first year you put it out that... Um... Uh, I can't remember how many brush fires we responded to there. <laughs> I know. The apartment, you know? Uh, it, which must have been frustrating on your end to see it. Yeah, it's just it's kind of like disgusting overall. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, well, but it all, was a dry year, like you say, and that was yeah. why. I think more than anything, it was because of the weather that year. Yeah, because the response has not been like that since that. Right. 
that year. And it's a shame. I mean, obviously they're going to throw them out the window because they don't put ashtrays in cars anymore. I maybe we got to make a campaign for ashtrays in cars. Mike. Get them back in cars. Get those. You know, people. People that don't smoke always need a place for their change. Right. You know? <laughs> Let them have it back. <laughs> Bring the ashtray back. <laughs> Bring the ashtray back. We'll save our, save our uh, median strips and bring the uh, back. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, all right, so we only got a couple minutes left. Any uh, any new projects going on that, uh, uh, how's things with the uh, chamber? Chamber's great. They're doing, they're pretty, uh, pretty active chamber right now. Um, now I'm on the board and I attend just about all the meetings and um, virtually they, now, of course, though, they're all, they're all virtual. It's not as fun. Yeah. They're doing the social. It was great. Uh, the last social event you just did with, uh, with uh, CJ, you, he was ordered, you ordered coffee and scones, tea and scones. Right. So, I missed that one, but event. yeah, I mean, you got, um, how, how cool Brian, that? Brian. That, that's been, a, you know, the imagination there, you gotta have a virtual thing. Oh yeah, sign up. I'll get you some scones and tea before the event, so you can have scones and tea together, but apart. Is that what happened? I wasn't even aware of that. Yeah, you can sign up the uh, up to the day before, so he knows how many scones to have, and you can pick them up, and then you go and have your little meet. <laughs> well, something similar we're doing is uh, ask the experts on Thursday nights, and usually see a lot of glasses being tipped when we're. We're yeah. broadcasting over Zoom on that one, you know, five o'clock, six o'clock type thing. That's yeah, and they're still doing all the little uh, 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 networking uh, things as possible too. You know, getting all the new people in to to make your uh, contacts because uh, you know this town is so great with talented, talented professionals and fantastic businesses. You know, new businesses are, are still coming to town. Um, old businesses are staying here. Cambodians is still holding on. I know. You know, God bless uh, uh, Peter and Marianne down there. They're doing great. Good. Um, so anyway, so get down to Western Industries and, and get yourself planted because we're not out of this yet. You know, we're not out of this yet. So I, I wish you the best of luck down the Cape. Hopefully that uh, business works. And we'll get you back on soon, maybe in the middle of summer. We'll talk about some barbecues or something. How's that? Oh, that sounds good, Mike. <laughs> All right, Peter. Well, folks, uh, I'd like to thank uh, Peter Mezzett from uh, Western Industries coming on today, our little expert on everything green and uh, and lots of stuff around town. Peter's, you know, been here a few years, you know. So, uh, But I want to thank you for joining us. Uh, come back and see us on Wednesday night. Uh, we'll be here hopefully uh, with a couple more people for you to interview. So uh, from everyone here at HCAMP, have a great day. Thank you, Mike.